Medieval Christian altarpieces trace their origins to the receptacles used to house and store the relics of saints. Beginning around the 4th century AD, the Byzantine Church used decorated containers to store the bodily remains of saints and the objects touched by these holy persons. Small portable art objects without holy relics soon became common among clerics and well-off private individuals. These luxury objects were gazed upon during prayer and contemplation. Eventually, carved altarpieces became immense, imposing articles commissioned for noblemen's chapels, churches, and cathedrals. Regardless of when each altarpiece was created, they were contemporary works of art, communicating to a particular audience in a particular time and place. Altarpiece craftsmen represented contemporary fashions and social hierarchies in their works, especially when treating anonymous characters. This magnificent cabinet-style altarpiece with painted wing doors and carved gilded interior may be admired at the Philadelphia Museum of Art. It is filled with captivating detail. Prosperous townsmen wear more sober garments, warm fur-lined woolens, and headgear to ward off the cold brought on by the Little Ice Age. Elderly men and those with sedentary occupations wear longer robes to keep warm. Prosperous townswomen wear heavy fabrics and linings like the men with longer skirts and petticoats. On their heads, they wear elaborate coifs, veils, and decorative headdresses to conceal their hair, present a fashionable appearance, and to stay warm. The poor wear shorter, fewer, and less encumbering garb because they perform physical labor. The tormentors of Christ are depicted as mercenary soldiers or Landsknechte. These mercenaries wore particularly flamboyant clothing and headgear. Landsknechte were devil-may-care transients dwelling on the margins of society. They were notorious for licentiousness, pillage, and murder. Almost lost in the riot of detail is a single woman, a bystander or perhaps a servant employed by the Holy Family. She is startled by a dog in the temple while the infant Jesus is being circumcised. She wears simple clothing and a plain hairstyle and head covering with an inverted triangle silhouette that was fashionable in the Low Countries around the year 1500. This headdress is simple to do and with practice can be arranged by feel without a mirror. It works well on shorter, thinner hair types. I will show you how to make this style using period appropriate tools. I use a medieval reproduction double-sided comb made from wood and short hair bodkins I whittled from dowels. My coif is a length of 100% linen fabric measuring slightly more than twice the circumference of my head. The fabric is 18 inches wide before laundering. I list a fabric source at the end of the video. I secure my coif using short T-pins. First step is always to get your hair up out of the way. I need to make a high bun on my crown. After combing my hair nice and smooth, I'll coil a tight bun at the crown. I next push three short hair bodkins at different angles to hold my skinny bun securely. I now carefully wrap the fabric around my head, aligning the selvage edges as I go. After I have it wrapped the way I want it, 
I hold both sides of the coif and whip my head a couple of times. This step is critical because it smooths out the interior layer of fabric. If I don't do this, I won't have the neat triangular silhouette when I'm finished. While pressing the end of the fabric wrap on my forehead, I carefully rise and push the loose fabric backwards. I'll now take a single T-pin and very carefully push this sharp pin through all the layers of fabric at the front. I now adjust the tube of fabric so that it lies flat toward the front. Next, I will push another T-pin through my coiled hair at the crown. This prevents the coif from slipping off during wear. Finally, I arrange the tube of fabric toward the front and carefully pin inside through all the layers of fabric. I'm now ready for whatever tasks my medieval day requires. Plucking chickens, scrubbing floors, spinning, or brewing beer. Dankeschön, guten Tag. <laughs>